To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Greetings to you, wherever you are, from a wintry woodland in North Wales. This is part one of Emmanuel, God is with us. And we're going to go on a journey over the next 40 minutes or so through the prophecies of Isaiah. We have songs and stunning images, and I've got reasons to share why I love the book of Isaiah. And we also have some people sharing short devotionals and tes testimonies about Isaiah. So let's start with George Verwa, one of these special people, as he talks from Isaiah chapter 6, the call of Isaiah. Way back in the, in the book of Isaiah in chapter 6, sometimes in a meeting, I've just spoken on this passage, but today I'm just going to finish with it. It's a beautiful picture of King of Isaiah uh, and experiencing worship. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a, a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Hovering around him was mighty seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With the remaining two, they flew. In a great chorus, they sang, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Wow, picture this, picture this. The glorious singing shook the temple at the very foundation. The entire sanctuary was filled with smoke. And then I said, and in the old translation, it says, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. Here in this translation, my destruction is sealed. I am a sinful man and a member of a sinful race. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. When he expresses this, this, brokenness before God, which is such an important part of our spiritual life, then we see this powerful experience of forgiveness. Then one of the seraphim flew over to the altar, picked up a burning coal with a pair of tongues. He touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. That sounds like something in the book of Romans. And yet we're in Isaiah chapter six, somehow a foreshadow of what the living Jesus would do for us. The call of Isaiah, one of George Werber's favorite passages because it talks about sending people out. Here I am, Lord, send me. Now, if there was one word to sum up the whole of the book of Isaiah, in fact, the whole of the Bible, it would be this, Emmanuel, a Hebrew word, which means God with us. Ever since Eden, man has been running away from God, turning his back on God. And even today, we turn our backs on God. But God still says, Emmanuel, I am with you. Let's hear our first song. God is with us. 
Jonathan, Jonathan Powell, my good friend, who's the mastermind behind all this filming and editing, putting the whole presentation together. I'm very grateful to Jonathan for that. We've had good fun, haven't we, filming these videos? We have. It's been, it's been great fun to work on a project over summer, uh, throughout the year really, um, especially when we were in lockdown and to go to these great locations, get the camera out and film some some, some great scenes. At the golden hour, for example, that you told yeah, me about. Yeah, we were walking, uh, we, we clambered up to the top of the panorama view yeah. and we wanted to get a nice warm feeling for the video. Um, so we went there at the specific time just before sunset um, and we, we were right, the sun came down and provided that glimmering, that glimmering glow. Right, I've made him climb up with his big <laughs> backpack. All the equipment, the equipment, yes, yep. But we made it. So, Jonathan also runs um, a website along with the youth of Bradley Road Fellowship. Tell us a little about that. Mm. Yeah, well, around about a, uh, just over a year ago now, um, we wanted to create um, a website that provided um, resources, articles um, for young people and uh, people of all ages about the good news of Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. And so we've been very blessed over the last year to see that grow and we've been very thankful to be able to have your your hub as it were on the website with all your music your songs and your videos um, which really um, adds to adds to what we're trying to do so that's shoutgoodnews.com you can see the website link yeah these songs i'm very grateful that they're on the website and the whole purpose for them and these isaiah songs is to encourage people with the message the word of god so do check that one out. We're going to hear now from Dr. Kendall, Dr. R. T. Kendall, who was minister at Westminster Chapel years ago and now lives back in the States. He's talking here about Isaiah's call in chapter 6 as well. Uh, back in Tennessee, after being in New York for two or three days, uh, Isaiah is on my mind. I'm thinking of Isaiah chapter 6. It's when Isaiah the prophet saw the glory of the Lord. He saw the angels, the uh, seraphim. They cried one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the result was that Isaiah felt convicted of sin. What does that teach us? I think this, when we see the glory of the Lord, it's only a matter of time, usually sooner, perhaps instantly, you're aware of your sin. And I don't mean to be unfair, but where there is no conviction of sin, I wonder whether the glory of the Lord is present, whether we are aware of his glory. Surely, when we see his glory, we're gonna be like Isaiah who said, woe is me, I am undone. May God help us all to see it. Isaiah's first reaction when God appears to him in all his glory is woe is me. But then God gives him a commission and his second reaction is here I am Lord, send me. It reminds me of Peter in the boat when he sees the wonder of Jesus. He says, depart from me Lord, for I am a sinful man. Jesus gives him a commission and then Peter serves him for the rest of his days. We've got another song now from chapter 25 in Isaiah. And as we listen to this song, think, what does God do for his people on the holy mountain? Oh 
the storm You have still the uproar As when he is cooled by the cloud And in that day They will say our God We trusted in Him and He saved us Surely this is our God Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation On this mountain the Lord will prepare So what does God do for his people on the holy mountain? He offers them a feast, a banquet of aged wine. He promises to swallow up death forever and to wipe away every tear from their faces. And how do we respond? We say, surely this is our God. Now during part one and part two, I'll be sharing seven reasons why I love the book of Isaiah. And here is reason number one. I love the book of Isaiah because it is rooted in history, and yet it is eternal. Its message is eternal. Isaiah lived in a time of great empires, and he came from Jerusalem in Judah, and little Judah always had a threat of invasion from Assyria coming down from the north. And Isaiah's message was, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand firm at all, from chapter seven, given to the king Ahaz. So, because it's rooted in history, this book has authenticity. But because it's filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, it has authority. Now we'll hear from another friend of mine, Graham Fairburn, former pastor of Wycliffe Baptist Church in Reading. Isaiah 25, 7 to 8. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. What a wonderful picture of that final resurrection day. And of course, this was revealed to Isaiah more than 700 years before the Lord Jesus died and rose again. This is a verse which has a lot of personal meaning to me. Nearly 30 years ago on Easter Saturday, I was preparing a sermon on these verses and getting very excited about it when I got a message from the hospital to say that my father had taken seriously ill. And in fact, sadly, he passed away the next morning. Well, of course, that sermon was not preached. 
But what a blessing those verses were to me, how they brought me joy in that time of sorrow. What a hope that the final enemy is destroyed. And it's all through the death and the glorious rising again of our Lord Jesus Christ. May praise and honor and glory be to his name. Amen. That was very moving hearing from Graham. Now, I have Rose here with me, Rose Harvey, my wife, everybody, and she's here to tell us just a little bit about two of our guest speakers. Now, Rose, you knew Dr. Kendall long before you met me. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, well, in my youth, I did a nurse's training in London. And uh, the Nurses Christian Fellowship was well set up there, but I had a hunger and a thirst for the Word of God. And so it was that I went to Westminster Chapel, where R.T. Kendall was the minister, and he had a wonderful gifting of just bringing the Scriptures to life. So that was the church where I was for that time. And how about George Furway? You knew him as well. Yes, George Verver visited London. Um, he was introducing us to the new ship project, uh, the MV Doulos. And when I saw this ship, I just was absolutely spellbound, really. It really had the wow factor. And it was something that automatically I just knew I wanted to do. So you went on a trip on the ship? Yeah, so after I'd finished my training, um, I boarded this ship for a two-year program. It was like a floating Bible, ex um, Bible college, really. And it, it really just turned my world upside down. It was obviously a miraculous project because we would have 3,000 people come up the gangway when we were in port and we had lots of meetings. And it, it just turned me upside down. I, 40 years on, I've never been the same again. Thank you. And you went all the way around South America. So two men who've had a big impact on your Christian walk. Now we're going to have another song from chapter 35. This is uh, The Way of Holiness. Alec Mottier, the Bible commentator, calls this a truly delightful poem. Think about what it reminds you of in the New Testament. The desert will live again, the wilderness rejoice Like the crocus blossoming in spring Like the dawn you will behold the splendor of our God Your eyes will see the beauty of the King For the eye, the eyes of the blind will see The mute tongue shall for joy Oh, and the lame, the lame will leap like a deer There will be a highway in the wilderness And it will be called the way of holiness Strengthen the feeble hands of hope the knees that give way Say to those with faint and fearful hearts Be strong, do not be afraid For your King will come You'll see a pleasant land that stretches far For the eyes, the eyes of the blind will see And the ears, the ears of the in the tongue, the mute tongue shall for joy. Oh, and the lame, the lame will leap like a deer. There will be a highway in the wilderness, and it will be called the way of holiness. The redeemed, the saved, the ransomed of the Everlasting 
everlasting joy. Everlasting joy will crown the hill. Yes, in the sound, the sound of sorrow will have fled. We will journey on that road of righteousness, and it will be called the way. So, what did the chorus of that song remind us of? The eyes of the blind will see, and the ears of the deaf will hear. Yes, in the New Testament, the ministry of Jesus. 700 years after Isaiah wrote those words, along came Jesus, and his ministry was an exact fulfilment of those words. Now let's have reason two as to why I love the book of Isaiah. I love Isaiah because the New Testament loves Isaiah. Did you know there are 72 quotations, direct quotations from Isaiah in the New Testament? There's 20 quotations in Romans alone and Isaiah is often found on the lips of Jesus. So Isaiah is a crucial book for the understanding of the whole New Testament. Now let's have another of our guest speakers, Andrew Graham, pastor of Bradley Road Baptist Church in Wrexham, sharing from Isaiah 66, but the theme he shares on ties in with what we've just heard in our song about the way of holiness. A verse I love is Isaiah 66 verse 2. These are the ones I look on with favour, those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. The verse says that the Lord, the holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, looks upon his people with favour, with grace, and he has shown that favour, that grace, in, in the servant of Isaiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to give God's people life. The verse then goes on to say how we should respond in view of God's favour. As God's people, how do we respond? Well, we respond with humility, with contrite, with broken hearts, knowing that he loves us despite all that we have done against him. And we should also tremble at his word joyfully obeying what he says. Sometimes when I'm feeling a bit down, I go outside and I look at the night sky and I see the planets and I see the stars. And I remember that God has created all these things. But this great God looks upon me, despite all the mess I sometimes make, and he loves me. And this humbles me and it causes me to give him praise. Thank you to Andrew Graham and to all our guest speakers who have given up time to share with us. Now we're coming to our next song from chapter 40 and I have to say chapter 40 is probably my favourite chapter in the whole of the Old Testament. It gives us a magnificent picture of who God is and I'd like you to think as you listen to this first song, prepare a way for the Lord, what does it tell us about God? What is God like? Think through that as we listen to this song. In the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted, every mountain made low. And the glory of the Lord the glory of the Lord be made known. In the desert prepare a way for the Lord. Make straight a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted, every mountain Of the field, the 
grass fades, flowers fall in the breath of the Lord. Flowers fade and disappear like tracks in the snow. So what does Isaiah 40 tell us that God is like? It tells us that he is powerful, his glory will be shown in all the earth. It tells us that he is eternal, his word stands forever. But it also tells us he is gentle, like a shepherd, caring for his flock. We come now to reason three as to why I love the book of Isaiah. I love Isaiah because it is full of awesome images. Remember, this is an oral society, a people who didn't have books, not everyone would have a scroll. They'd listen to the scroll on the Sabbath, but not everyone had books. So they had to have pictures to remember the message. And Isaiah gives us some wonderful pictures. He talks about light in the darkness in chapter 9, in chapter 49, in chapter 60. He talks about the wilderness, a place of purification, the people wandering in the wilderness and the wilderness blossoming like a crocus. He talks about the holy mountain we've heard in the song and we're going to hear in part two about the new creation, new heavens and a new earth. Now I've counted over 40 major images in the book of Isaiah, pictures for people to remember. You have eagles soaring, you have flowers withering, you have waters surging like our waterfall here and you have fire raging and so on. So many wonderful pictures that stay in the mind. It is a book of pictures. Let's hear again from Dr. Kendall talking from Isaiah 40. I want to read to you a very famous verse from Isaiah. It's chapter 40 verse 31. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I remember years ago how old people would claim that verse. And I've always kind of thought Isaiah 40, 31 is for old people. But wait a minute. I'm old. 85. That's pretty old. And guess what? My physician wrote me day before yesterday to say he had just seen my echocardiogram from the day before and he had examined me himself a, a week before and he said I'm fine I can keep working as usual and travel and uh, it's true I can tell you as an old man I have found it to be true and it will be true for you even if you're not old yet I'm so grateful to Dr. Kendall for sharing these short devotionals he does a daily Facebook post and I asked him if he'd mind doing a little series on Isaiah so he graciously said yes which is why we have them to share with you here. Now chapter 40 is a really epic passage we've already had one song and now we have another song the everlasting God. When they were looking for a passage for Eric Little to read in the film Chariots of Fire they went to this chapter on the day before he won his Olympic medal. So let's listen to this song. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Who has fixed the stars in the sky as numberless as the sand? 
who has taught him knowledge or helped him understand? Who has understood the mind of the Lord? Who has the Lord consulted to help him see the light? Whom has he needed to show him the wrong from the right? To whom can you compare him and his measureless might? Who has understood the mind of the Lord? Do you not know? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator. stumble and fall, he will not grow weary or tired at all. Those who put their trust in the Lord on eagles' wings will soar. They will find their strength in the Lord. Young men grow weary, they stumble and fall. I still have Isaiah 40, 31 on my mind. They who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. I suppose waiting for God to come, <clears throat> answer prayer, or fulfill a promise, waiting is the hardest thing in the world to do. But I have learned this. I have learned this over the years. It's worth it, waiting. His promise is worth waiting for. Sometimes God will answer a new prayer the very same day or next day. And other times there are prayers that could be prayed for 50 times and it's not answered. I don't know why some prayers are answered more quickly than others, but it just happens this way. But this verse tells me, if I wait, he will turn up, he will show up, he will answer. He never fails, and he's never too late, never too early, always just on time. My word for you today, wait for him. It's worth waiting for. Worth waiting for, as Dr. Kendall says. Now, you don't have to wait too long to see part two. Is that right, Jonathan? No, that's very correct. Hopefully you'll be joining us tomorrow evening at 7.30, uh, same place same time you'll be able to access the video by going onto youtube looking for the link on your facebook page or by going to the website um, and the link will be below and then both parts will stay on youtube yes they'll be on youtube for you to watch whenever you please great okay so tell your friends about them if they've missed this as well so dr kendall he's an author of many books his most recent one is called we've never been this way before relating biblical truths to the present situation in society. So do look out for that.
Great to have you in part one. Join us for part two. For to us a